Welcome in to another edition of Hawks Live Gaming. Joining me now, rookie receiver John Ursula. Welcome to Hawks Live Gaming. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> a little bit different. We're going to play NBA 2K20. Mm -hmm. It's a week old. You haven't got a chance to play it. I've played it. You'll still probably beat me by 20, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> and uh, we'll ask you some questions about life on and off the field, and we'll go from there. All right, sounds good. Cool. All right, well, first things first, teams, um, got to figure out who you like? Do you do you still follow the NBA? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I'm a LeBron fan. LeBron fan. But you know, with 2K, I can run with anybody really. You play a lot of 2K? Yeah, I play a bunch of 2K. I only play really 2K and Madden. I'm not big into like you know the gun games. So. Other games. Yeah. Uh, what is it about 2K or or basketball? I know you're a big athlete, and we'll get to some of the other athletic things you've done. But what is it specifically about basketball and 2K that you love? Oh, well, I'm a hooper, yep. uh, so basketball is my first love, and so, uh, you know, my whole life I've always had an Xbox and 2K. Yep. That's, that's all I kind of <laughs> needed, and so uh, that's kind of what, you know, I, I stayed with it my whole life. We'll do the Crosstown rivalry. How about that? Okay, LA, yeah, LA? Yeah. All right. There you go. They don't have to travel too far. Nope. <laughs> so, big LeBron guy, I got to ask, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, the greatest of all time debate. Dwayne broke it down a little bit last week. He picked LeBron. So what are you picking? I'm LeBron, You're LeBron. for sure. What, yeah. what about LeBron makes him the greatest of all time? Um, he's dynamic. He, he, he can do everything on the court. Um, obviously, you know, Jordan and Kobe were both, you know, that they kind of had that mama mentality, take over the game. But mm -hmm. um, LeBron can do everything, passing, you know, lock you down, chase blocks, score the basket. I mean, if he wanted to, he could probably drop 40, 50 a game if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's not his style of play. He, he tries to get everybody involved. So, but I really like LeBron. So what from basketball can a football player kind of take? What, is there any sort of skills that you take from watching these guys and say, hey, I can kind of apply that to my game or something I can do on, out on the field? Yeah, no, I, I uh, mimic the crossover on all my releases yeah. almost. So, I mean, you have to have kind of a, well, you don't have to, but it helps you having a, back, a basketball background as far as a receiver goes because that's mostly your releases of that, 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 and then, you know, or you could sauce them up a little more, but mm -hmm. it's the same as a crossover. So, it, you know, you mimic that stuff and you'll be in good shape. What about, so you, you mentioned LeBron, you mentioned, is there any other players that you grew up with? I know LeBron's kind of the new guy, but are there any other people, you mentioned crossover, were you a big AI guy growing AI, up? That's exactly who I was going to say. AI was like who kind of made me fall in love with basketball. Yeah. And just because he was a smaller guy in the league at the time. And um, so, yeah, he, he's the whole reason where I kind of like that crossover and I started loving and enjoying watching basketball. And he just brought that new style to the game, right? He absolutely like, did. He changed all the rules with clothes and all the things like that. Yeah. So. And that's why I, I love Kyrie now, too. So it's like That was my next it. question. Yeah. Who now do you think has the best handles in the Kyrie NBA? Irving. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie? Yeah. yeah. Are, are you taking stuff from his game? Are you liking his crossover? Because he's a little bit different than Allen in the fact that he can, can facilitate even better. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Kyrie's somebody definitely I uh, watch and use for myself as well. So we're playing in this view. This is Dwayne's view. Is this the view you play with or you play? No, I play with the all right, 2K we'll, view. All right, we'll switch it up after, but, uh, after, we can. This, after this one. We'll let you, we'll let you score. Oh, all right. Anyone want to play D? Come on now. <laughs> Dang, man. All right, here we go. Let's switch settings. Real I quick. definitely don't run with that view. That's like rookie <laughs> stuff. That's what uh, you got to talk to your boy, Dwayne Brown. Dwayne that's what Brown, he ran, he ran it like that, that? Yeah, so. Oh, that would drive me nuts. Yeah, he, uh, that's not what I usually roll either. There we go. I run with 2K. Or, yeah, but I don't know what they use it now or call it. I guess it's called, let's see, 2K. Yeah, see, like this, yeah. 2K. Boom. There you go. Perfect. There we go. Now, now, I'm now he's cruising. 20. Now I'm about to Now I'm about to lose by it a lot. <laughs> no. Ooh. All right. So, 0-0, zero, zero. Clippers, Lakers. What do you think about this rivalry heading into this year? You know, Kawhi wins the championship with the Raptors. Yeah. Goes to L.A. You think they're going to be successful, the Clippers this year, or you think it's going to be all Lakers? All no, day? this is going to be a, a great matchup um, year round, just because you know PG, you have Kawhi, um, obviously you got the six man who is uh, what's, what's his name, uh, Williams. Yep. 
So they got a great uh, backcourt and frontcourt, so they'll give LA, the Lakers, some rubs. But I think the Lakers will come out on top. Yeah, I would agree with you. So switching gears here, a little bit of football stuff. This rookie class, uh, there's something a little bit different about this rookie class. You guys seem to have already bonded and become just a, a different type of group than we've seen in years past. Uh -huh. What is it about these other rookies that you're playing with that you, you just had that instant connection? Um, man, honestly, we all just gelled really well. Just We all wanted to see uh, each other succeed and um, you know make the, make the team and so, uh, we just had a great opportunity to showcase what we could do, and and uh, now looking for like looking back at it, it's like we all we all kind of made it as far as the receiver room goes, mm -hmm. and so and we we're the ones who've all been really close, so it's just really cool to see that you know that we've come this far. What's special about this wide receiver room? Because from the outside, you know, we have all these. We were seeing all these new faces, you know, Doug Baldwin's gone, all the, all the fan favorites that people are used to are sort of not there anymore, but I think it gives it an opportunity for them to learn about you guys. What would you tell new, uh, Seahawk fans about this rookie wide receiver group? Um, like, how would you sell it to the, to the 12s? Uh, it's, I think it's very dynamic and um, adverse group where you have, you know, you have DK who is, honestly just a freak where he can you know he can outrun you um, he, you can line him up in the slot and kind of do a little bit of everything um, you know you have um, Gary who, who can just flat out run and I mean I, ha I haven't seen people run a go ball like him before where it's just like man you could the DB could be on him and then the next second he's just gone and uh, Terry kind of brings that same element where you know, Terry ran a 4-3 at his pro day, so it's like, man, it's like, you got, you better stay with him because you lose him for a second and he's gone. And then you got Jazz Ferguson, obviously Jazz and Terry on P-Squad, but like, they're they're part of the, our rookie class. And then, so, and then you have me who's kind of just, you know, I try to develop, you know, my yards after catch, being explosive and doing a little bit inside and outside. Love it. All right, 8-6 after one, actually a close game. We get to play the view that I'm used to. All the excuses are out the window. Now John's gonna start to really put, it, put me on wax here. Um, going back to just growing up and athletes, what, what are some of the other athletes that you looked up to? I, I know you, you played so many different sports, so what were the other athletes that you sort of looked up to growing up? Um, you know, honestly, when growing up, I was uh, mostly played basketball and soccer, and so I really like uh, Ronaldinho. Oh, uh, a for, soccer man! Yeah, I'm a big soccer fan. Okay, there we, you're speaking my language. Yeah, so um, that was something I definitely had my hand uh, hands full with, just because I, I grew up playing those that sport and basketball, and so I loved watching Ronaldinho, um, Ronaldo of old. Um, and you know a bunch of a handful of other guys but you know i always stay stay uh tuned with um, the the soccer game world as well so who's your favorite club are you a big barca guy because of ronaldinho or no i'm actually a big psg fan okay i lived in paris for two years that's right yes so uh you know that was an easy decision for me to go with stick with PSG. Neymar. Neymar right now. Plus and they got the Jumpman sponsorship. Yeah, the so. Jumpman sponsorship is just dope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I'm trying to get my hands my hands on those jerseys like ASAP. Yeah. So. Are you big sneakerhead? Do you like Jordans and things like that? Um, no, not not of uh, not growing up or anything like that. Lately, I've kind of slowly worked Built myself into that, but still, I have a hard time. Uh, putting that much money into a shoe but yeah it, it, it's always cool though like but it's never something I've been super into so talk about growing up you had a different uh, oh, there you go violation on me 10 10 <laughs> minute left a little over a minute left in the half nice nice evenly matched one yeah this this go around um, you mentioned you know growing up and you went from Hawaii to Utah, you know, to France, mm -hmm. now to Seattle. What's your journey been like to get to Seattle? I know that's obviously a really broad question, but kind of walk me through, you know, the journey from start to, to Seattle. Um, yeah, no, it was, you know, coming out of uh, college, out of Hawaii, where I stayed home. I decided to play for my hometown. Um, was that tough? 
Yeah, I mean, or staying or, or yeah, just coming out here. Deciding to, deciding to stay. I mean, there's a different amount of pressure that comes with staying, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, being a local kid from Hawaii, uh, you know, I, I, I left, like you said, I left for high school to go to Utah for uh, my sophomore and senior year. And then I went on my mission right after that to France. So I was away for five years. And so it was actually an easy decision for me to come or go back home to Hawaii where I could be around you know, just that 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 environment, that law of spirit, and mm -hmm. everything like that. So I was I was really glad to be able to stay uh, stay in Hawaii and play college football. So you, you were talking about um, just the, the years apart and the years in between going uh -huh. going on your mission. What what was it like to be a, away from the game of football for that long? I was a, I was out of football for uh, nearly four seasons. Wow! And so it was a long time before I got to play my first collegiate game. Yeah, I was out for four seasons and then I finally got to play my first college game. And so it was, it was um, you know, there was pros and cons. Obviously I came back from my mission and I was already 21 years old. Mm -hmm. where I was a little more mature. Um, I, I could uh, figure some things out in, just in life and in, in the playbook a little faster just because I had that maturity and I, ha I had that study ethics. And so um, that part helped, but also, you know, being away for four years is a tough, it's a long yeah. time to not play football. So, um, you know, I had to work back into it. And, and, and I also played quarterback all throughout high school. Right. So I never really played receiver like that. And so I had to really learn the, the positioning and just new, new play or new styles of play. You're up to seven seconds left. Let's see if I can get something before the end of the half. See, Ooh, see. come on. Oh, oh my God, boogie. Man, it would be, it'd be so cool to see Boogie healthy on this oh, team, yeah. man. That's yeah. one thing that kind of bums me out about this Lakers team is that, you know, we won't get to see him full strength. Mm -hmm. We won't get to see this 2K style squad. Right, right. I would love uh, that. When they picked him up, I just said, man, they're complete, you know, where, man, Boogie's going to, you know, help them have a true big. But, you know, seeing him always go down is just super tough seeing that. So you're up to halftime. Good game. Good Thanks game. for tuning in. Hawks Live, rookie receiver John Ursua here. Um, getting back into this, you mentioned transitioning from quarterback to receiver. How difficult is that, especially so late in your football career? Like, I guess, what was the hardest thing you had to overcome in making that transition? Um, honestly, it was just learning, learning like how to run routes and just like the lingo of of being a receiver like as a quarterback obviously I knew like concepts and things like that I had to know what my receivers are doing but you know like I, I remember I came into college and they were like we we're doing seven on seven I didn't have I didn't really know the plays it was like the first day of camp and they're like run a dig run a dig and I'm just like I'm like what's a dig <laughs> I'm like honestly I was like what's a dig and they're just like a 10 yard day and like this yeah and then I, like they snapped it and I'm just like okay so like now I'm jogging and I'm just looking around like Oh, okay, I break in, and so like you know, those are some of the adjustments I had to really lock in on, and then, and then you know, the more of my style of play got to come in as I learned how to run routes and see coverages and things like that. So people in Seattle are already starting to compare you to a former 15 wide receiver, Doug Baldwin. Have you had a chance to talk with Doug or, or any interaction with some former wide receivers who have played here before? Uh, unfortunately, not. Yeah, I, I, I would love to meet him, and you know just chat chat chop it up a little bit and just kind of pick his brain but um you know you know hopefully one day i will get to but um no yeah it's been it's been cool uh, just hearing the, some of the comparisons people have been uh mentioning and so but I, you know i'm just trying to play my game and just learn as much as i can and help the offense as best as i can so given the chance to talk to those guys what are some of the questions you'd like to ask um you know, some of the four, I guess, if you had a chance to sit down with Doug, what's the first question you would ask? Um, I think I, I kind of want to, you know, I, I really want to just um, know his story a little bit more. Being that he was an undrafted free agent, mm -hmm. I, there wouldn't be nothing specific as far as um, a question goes on the field. But I just kind of would like to know his story and how he how he overcame that and what he did every single day to get, you know, get to where the position where he was. And so um, that's kind of something I would, I would love to just know that story. So 
he played, let's see, uh, I was doing some research. It looked like almost every single sport in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, track and field, baseball, basketball, football. Other than basketball and football, you've mentioned your love for the two. What other sport did you just love and did you think you could potentially go pro in? Um, shoot, honestly, it was, you know, I, like, growing up in Hawaii, it's like, you're either a beach dude mm -hmm. or you're you're playing some type of sport so that you're not too bored on that island, you know what I mean? But, yep. um, but no, honestly, I, I felt like I really could have gone far in either the basketball or the soccer, um, where I, like I said, like those are the two sports I grew up playing for the longest, and then I kind of started playing football once, um, you know, my, I saw my brothers kind of take that path, and then I was like, man, this kind of looks cool, like fun. Let's see if I, what I can do with it. And so th those two, those two were like the dream for sure. Like basketball and soccer would have been something I would have loved to pursue and play in the next level. I love it. Um, so again, 22-16. He's starting to run away, ladies and gentlemen. I told you it was going to happen. Um, but I'm, doing, I'm pretty proud of myself here. Not to toot my own horn, but Dwayne was just literally embarrassing me the entire time. So at least I can walk out of here with my head hell high. <laughs> Um, as I turn it over and <laughs> give the ball right, right back to him and Anthony. Ooh, Kuzma. So, growing up in Hawaii, what's, what's something that people, you know, people from Hawaii just have this sense of community and family, and it's hard to kind of describe, but I'm going to ask you to, to try your best to, to describe, you know, what, what that feeling is like um, to be from Hawaii. Um, yeah, it's just it's a it's a laid back kind of just chill per, uh, mentality where not not to say you know you're, you're lazy or anything, but it's just like you know you you enjoy the opportunity you have to live in such a beautiful place. You are, you're honestly living in paradise, and so you know if if you can't appreciate that, you, I mean, and you can't have a good attitude while living there, then you're not in the right place. And so I think we adopt that um, you know that just laid back where like everything's gonna be okay you know and so that's a, and uh, just living in Aloha having that Aloha spirit where you know everybody's family everybody's working towards the same goal. Anthony Davis on fire right now this is not good ladies and this gentlemen is, this is this is how you uh, get in trouble I'm gonna need to have to double this guy with Kawhi come on now I'll leave Kuzma open oh man and he green. hits the green three the green, green three man oh man that's what I get you know what I mean that's what I get <laughs> you leave Kuzma you might <laughs> Um, video games wise, you play with a quarterback who's like a video game. What's it been like catching passes from a guy like Russell Wilson? Man, it's been <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, just seeing, seeing him, you know, take control over a game and just being able to put the ball at any, any place that like you can, uh, you know, you can imagine. And a lot of times, too, I think it goes unnoticed that he he throws receivers open is, is a huge saying that um, you know that we kind of say here it's where he, he throws you open like you could be covered up but he'll put it in such a position where the defender can't be right and so being able to catch the balls from him has just been unreal um, you know I haven't had a lot of opportunities with him but yep. um, the f very few times that I have um, it's just been unbelievable. I mean, it comes in so so soft and so nice from the deep balls to a, a little, you know, a little hitch route or anything. It just it, com it comes into your hand very smooth, and he just has that release and that feeling for everybody, everybody's speed and tempo. So it's been it's been really fun. What's been the biggest surprise working with Russell so far? Um, honestly, it's been his. It's been his. Uh, Oh, boogie, boogie for three. three. Oh, my God. No, uh, here comes the runaway, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Here it comes. It's just been his positive mentality. I, I don't, I'm not, um, you know, it, it was a surprise because I wasn't exactly sure um, what kind of guy or how he was. I knew he was going to be a huge leader and a great role model on and off the field, but um, he, he, he's always so positive no matter the situation, no matter um, what's going on or what took place in the play previous to that he just always keeps that upbeat and it's just it's super cool to be around that because it feeds off it, it just goes off of him and 
everybody else feels it too. So I, I've heard you're also still, still actively a good basketball player. <laughs> and a lot of guys like to say that they got game, mm -hmm. talk big trash. So I want to know who actually has game on the Seahawks when it comes to playing basketball and who talks a big game but is not. They, it's more talk than the game. <laughs> um, no, well, honestly, I've only got to play with the rookies, and so I can only speak on their behalf. All right, so give me the rookie breakdown. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, you know, the rookie receivers, we went and hooped at LA Fitness. It was like the last day of OCAs or something. We weren't, you know, at, we weren't trying yeah. to do nothing crazy yeah. but we went a light a light pickup game all right, right. john john yeah, just not, john and pete relax it wasn't yeah. serious um so we went jazz terry gary me and dk and um so out of the bunch you know obviously um i think dk and jazz were the hoopers yeah and then terry's by far the biggest talker and uh <laughs> not really the big hooper <laughs> but um, it was fun playing with them though for sure how would you scheme against basketball DK Metcalf? Not wide receiver DK Metcalf, <laughs> basketball DK Metcalf. Uh, no, we, we play a lot of one-on-one. -on -one, so, um, you know, I've had the privilege to play against them one-on-one -on -one as well. We did some fun one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups. But, uh, no, I always try to give him space. I try to make him a shooter. <laughs> you know, he obviously has the size advantage on me. So as soon as he gets it in, it's pretty tough to stop him there. But... No, I just try to make, I try to live off of his shot and, you know, you got to live with the outcome there, but um, he has a not bad jumper too, so, but I, I would say Jazz's jumper is a little bit better than oh, his, and one. And one. <laughs> it's like me, see, the strategy, I was trying to give you that space, you made me pay. <laughs> DK not quite making you pay for the space you're giving him. Exactly. <laughs> so... What are you looking forward to most to get out when you get out on that field on, uh, when you get out there on a Sunday? What, what's going to be the biggest excitement for you? And uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I any opportunity I have to go out on the field, it's always just a blast. You know, here in the twelves this past weekend was just incredible. But whether whether it's a home game or away game, I'll just I'll just I'm just looking forward to going out there and helping the team as best as I can. You know, I've never been. Uh, individual or anything like that it's just it's just being able to go out with the guys and compete and being able to um, help the team win at any at all costs so before you head out there you listen to any music is there anything that you do pre-game to kind of get you amped for playing football <laughs> no no well i i don't i wouldn't say i get amped i'm okay. not a big uh <laughs> get hyped up guy before the game i kind of like more mellow set of aloha tunes. yeah right some very like soft tunes where i'm just chilled out and uh you know i saved my, that juice for for the game but uh yeah no i listen i listen to more relaxed stuff honestly like anything from local music to like beyonce even oh. to like you know like alicia keys just stuff to like where i can just chill out i, I don't i don't like the whole hype thing <laughs> Well, no Enya? Different. Are we going to hear any Enya in your playlist <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah, no, I, I, I had some Enya in okay. there too. Okay, a Enya, little Caribbean blue. Uh, yeah, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> I Hit love that. that. Oh. Oh! oh, the buzzer beater. The buzzer beater. That's how you do it. 45-28, rookie receiver, John Ursua. He can play in 2K. I did a little bit better, but still, got, still getting waxed, still getting put on blast. Maybe <laughs> next time I'll have one of these guys play with me so I can actually win a game. But, John, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you It's so been much. a pleasure. Yeah. We'll talk soon. <laughs>